Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm finally going to be sharing with you my thoughts on the newest fragrance from Kali, which is Yum Pistachio Gelato 33. So if you'd like to hear my thoughts then stay tuned. This video is a little bit long but I have a lot to say and I'm also going to be comparing it to another fragrance that a lot of people on Fragrantica say it smells like because I have both and I want to just tell you my thoughts on it in general. Is it a true gourmand? You know, does it live up to the advertising? How is the performance? Do I like the scent overall? Would I repurchase it? All of those thoughts are going to be in today's video, so stick around. And if this is your first time on my channel, I would love if you would consider subscribing. On this channel, we do talk all about perfume, so please subscribe and join my little community here. And with that out of the way, let's get started in today's video. All right, guys, so welcome back. Today is going to be my review of the new newest fragrance from Kali. This is the Yum Pistachio Gelato. 33 eau de parfum intense if you guys are following me on instagram you would have already seen a little reel that i uploaded which was a first impression that i made after i'd had this perfume for about a day just like my first impression because i like to also share with you guys like first impressions with things as well but then also come back and do a more thorough review so today's video is going to be my more thorough review and sort of my final thoughts on this fragrance. So first of all, I'm sure many of you were aware that this fragrance was accidentally released by Sephora a little early, whether or not that was intentional to grab a little bit of traction earlier or to get, you know, a little bit more sales in the beginning or what happened if it was glitched with the website. I'm not really sure what happened with that. However, my friend was actually able to snag a bottle and then she and I later did a trade. So she traded this bottle with me for another perfume. So I'm very grateful that I was able to get my hands on this bottle just a little bit earlier than the actual release date. So this perfume comes in this beautiful mint green box with white sides. On the back, you do have the main accords or the main notes here, which are listed. They don't have all of the notes. Um, and then when you open the box, it opens like so to reveal the beautiful fragrance inside. Now I will say as a preface, obviously this was not sent to me. I am under no obligation to give any kind of a good review about this perfume. I am a fan of some Kali fragrances, not all of them. I really like the citrus perfume. Actually, a lot of the Kali perfumes have been good, just not all of them were my cup of tea. So to preface this video, the elixir was not my cup of tea. I was not a fan of the whole patchouli apple thing that was going on in the elixir. The citrus I felt was a really beautiful rhubarb citrusy fresh rose scent. That was actually one of my favorite spring and summer perfumes for quite a long time. Um, their musk was really pretty, but it didn't have the best lasting power. Their Eden Juicy Apple I felt was kind of a flop for me personally, just because it smelled like basically a fruity body spray, but a very expensive beauty um, fruity body spray. Um, what else was there? Amber invite only I felt was fantastic. Just was not my cup of tea. A little bit too masculine for me. Would have loved it on a man or would have loved it if I was somebody who wore really deep boozy fragrances. Um, Utopia was gorgeous, but I'm not huge into white floral and coconut. So that one was just not for me personally. And the pink pepper one was beautiful, but it just ended up not being something I gravitated toward a lot. So I did not end up keeping that one. Kelly Vanilla 20 28 is one of my all-time favorite vanilla perfumes. It's one of my all-time favorite perfumes in general. I still have it and I have a backup bottle. That's how much I love that one and I think it's amazing. And also one of their newest releases which is the Royal Vanilla Sugared Patchouli. I absolutely love that one. I think it's a very classy, sophisticated, very posh, opulent, expensive smelling, Middle Eastern style sugary vanilla with some oud and some patchouli and some rum and I love it. So the Royal Vanilla Sugared Patchouli is one of my new favorite perfumes ever. So that is just my preface of this video. The first thing, what should we talk about to begin with? I have so many thoughts on this perfume. I don't know where to start with. The bottle for starters is this gorgeous like frosted mint green color. Um, which I think is very suitable for the fragrance that's inside. The fragrance that's inside very much smells exactly like the bottle looks. It smells kind of powdery, kind of frosted, not super intense. Um, it, had this been an opaque bottle, I think that would have made this seem like it was going to be a much more rich, intense fragrance, which this is not, which we'll get into in a moment. But the bottle itself looks like it perfectly portrays what is in here. We also have the diamond-shaped cap and it is a matte white cap and the atomizer on the Kali fragrances is gorgeous I will give it a little spray so you guys can hear what that sounds like the marketing for this fragrance was 
very much um, super intense, rich gourmand. It was very much like decadent, rich dessert. It just made it seem like it was going to be a lot more intense and sticky and creamy and gooey um, than what the perfume turned out to be. So before we get into what it smells like, let me go over the notes with you real quick. So the notes that you have in here are pistachio, bergamot, ice cream, rum, hazelnut, cardamom, lily of the valley, jasmine, peony, pear, raspberry, white peach, geranium, whipped cream, marshmallow, cotton candy, sandalwood, tonka bean, lacuum, cedar, and cacao. So there are a lot of notes in this fragrance and somebody had commented on someone's post and said they didn't think it was a very complex perfume or that it didn't seem as complex as what the notes gave it. I would argue that I think this is a pretty complex fragrance. I think it has multiple layers, multiple nuances. There's a lot going on in here. It is not a simple linear fragrance, very dynamic perfume. It changes a lot from your first spray to your final dry down, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And there's a lot going on in here. There's a lot of gourmand notes. There's some floral notes. Um, I know that a lot of people have said that they don't find this to be particularly gourmand. However, I think when you look at the word gourmand, you have to think, what does that mean? Gourmand means it smells like food. Whether or not that means you want to eat it, or it's like your type of gourmand, that's very subjective. This, in my opinion, is a gourmand because it smells like food. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a spray on my wrist here. Love the Kali atomizers, you guys. Okay, so. When you first spray this fragrance, when I first sprayed this fragrance, you guys, I was a little bit underwhelmed. I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know what that is. That's not what I was expecting. Based on the advertising and the marketing, it doesn't smell the way I expected it to smell when I first sprayed it. So when I first spray this, what I get mostly is like a powdery pistachio, but also a fresh, soapy, citrusy quality. So I get a powdery pistachio and a fresh, soapy, citrusy quality. After it's been on my skin for a couple of minutes, I do get just a little bit of rum in here, but there's not a ton of rum. The rum in here is kind of a fresh, clean rum. It's almost like a minty rum. I think that this perfume looks and smells as though it could have a little bit of mint in it. It does have a clean freshness to it. Um, if you told me there was mint in this perfume, I would not, I would believe you. So the rum that's in here is a little bit light and soft. It's not super deep and intoxicating and rich and boozy. That being said, I think that this is a perfect release for the spring summer because this is not a winter gourmand in my opinion. This is very much a warmer weather gourmand. So coming into March, April, May, perfect timing for a fragrance like this that is not super intense or rich or deep. I also get a lot of a powderiness in here and I'm not sure where that powderiness is coming from. There is marshmallow in here and I am getting marshmallow. I'm getting marshmallow even within the first couple minutes of spraying it before we've gotten to the dry down. I'm getting a powderiness, I'm getting nuttiness, mostly pistachio. Um, the citrus does dissipate. The citrus definitely does dissipate. The citrus is more in the opening. Bergamot is not a note that hangs around for a long time. Bergamot by nature is a top note that dissipates quickly. Um, so yes, it's quite fresh in the opening, but it's not like bergamot is there you know, throughout the whole perfume. It's just there to give it this effervescence. It almost has like this bubbly, effervescence in the opening, almost like a sparkling water beverage in the opening. Um, but then you immediately are flooded with this like powdery sort of marshmallowy pistachio kind of vibe. I also get some florals, mostly a light, soft, kind of a white floral. I'm thinking that must be the lily of the valley. I don't get a ton of, I don't get a ton of like geranium, peach, peony. Uh, I don't get much pear at all. Definitely for me, the most notable note, <laughs> which makes sense, is the pistachio and also sort of a soft white floral. And then like this powder, this powder that seems like it's coming from the powder on a marshmallow. So not the marshmallow itself, but when you open the bag and you know that powder that's sitting in the bag around the marshmallows, that is what it smells like. It's kind of, it's almost like dusty in a way, not dusty in a bad way, but kind of like kind of dusty, um, just like not a sweet, intense pistachio. For me, it's more of a powdery, soft, fluffy, soapy pistachio. So obviously we are not into the deep dry down. I've had this on my skin for all of like three minutes. 
so we're not there yet but once it does reach its full dry down that is when the sweetness comes through for me personally i i don't love the middle the middle for me it doesn't smell bad but yeah, the middle for me does not smell bad in the slightest. It is a very, very pretty perfume, but the part that I like the most about this perfume is that deep dry down. It is that final result, which for me comes approximately maybe 15 minutes after spraying this perfume, 15, 20 minutes. And ultimately that deep dry down is the most important part of a perfume because that is what you're left with. That is what is going to stay on your clothing. That is what is going to linger. That is what you are going to get for the final, the rest of the time you wear, right? The middle only lasts for so long. The top only lasts for so long. The dry down is what is gonna be there for four, five, six hours however long your perfume is gonna last. So for me, the dry down is the part that matters the most. And like I said, once I get to the deep dry down, that for me is where I'm finally getting the whipped cream, the cotton candy. Yeah, I'm even already getting a little bit of the woody components. I like that they threw in some florals in here. I like that they threw in some woody components. I like that it's not just a sticky, sweet mess. There's gourmand and then there's gourmand where it's like a sticky sweet mess this is not sticky sweet mess um and some people like that some people prefer it to be that super sticky rich thick sweet decadent which i'll be honest i do like some of those perfumes this is smell like pistachio gelato i actually had pistachio gelato for the first time ever you guys last when did i have it actually january for the first time ever and it was delicious i mean this does a good job of portraying pistachio gelato it really does like for me Eating pistachio gelato, which also is cold generally when you're eating it, it's cold, obviously. Um, it has this cold, like this cold minty freshness almost about it. And this perfume captures that for me. It does capture that for me. If I think about eating a scoop of pistachio gelato and wearing this perfume and smelling this perfume, they do compare. They do smell very, very similar for me. I think they did a good job with that. And overall, do I like this perfume? Yes, I do like it. Um, I don't have anything else in my collection quite like it. Pistachio is a note that I love and I just don't see it in a lot of perfumes. It's in Ely Saab Girl of Now, which is a very sticky sweet. That one is too sweet for me. Ely Saab Girl of Now is an example of a pistachio perfume that is too sweet for me. I just can't wear that one anymore. They also have it in the Guerlain Le Petit Robe Noir Eau Fraiche, which is now discontinued, which is a truly soapy pistachio. Um, fragrance and that's kind of what this reminded me of just a little bit when I first smelled it was a little bit of that petite robe noir eau fraiche which I do have here and I'll show you in a moment so it's not that I don't like this perfume I like it I think it's almost a little bit addictive like what I will say is I was a little bit disappointed when I first sprayed it I was a little disappointed I think a lot of people were disappointed just because the marketing makes it seem like it is gonna be just super rich decadent intense intoxicating and that's not what it is at the end of the day. It's not that. It's more of a fluffy, light, almost a fresh pistachio gelato. And there's some floral notes in there and it does have a clean soapiness in the opening. The soapiness I think comes from that combination of the bergamot with the florals. That gives it this soapiness and there's like this powdery pistachio soap qual quality about it, which I really, really get in the opening. And that throws people off because most people, when they make a decision about a perfume, it's not going to be after wearing it for a few hours. Most people who walk into a Sephora or whatever, or they're testing a perfume, they're going to give it a spray on a blotter card. They're going to smell it. And that opening is going to sell them or not sell them. People were not sold on the opening of this. The deep dry down, you guys, after this starts to dry down and gets to that deep dry down, I love it. I actually have worn this outside a couple of times. I've worn it to the gym. Um, I've worn it just in like in the evening with my boyfriend at home. I've put it on a pajama top. I've had it just on skin and gone outside. When you get to that deep dry down, it's absolutely delicious. It is delicious and sweet and decadent and yummy. The word yum is perfect for the way this perfume smells. To me, this is absolutely 100% gourmand. I mean, whipped cream, marshmallow, cotton candy, pistachio, ice cream, even the hazelnut, peach, pear. A lot of what's in here is very, very gourmand and those gourmand notes dominate. So just because a perfume is not all sickly sweet and sticky sweet and a big gooey gourmand concoction doesn't mean it's not gourmand. There's different types of gourmands. This is a fresh spring, summer gourmand. There's different types. There's winter gourmands, you know, there's 
there's the type of gourmands that you get from Bath and Body Works, which smell like, you know, strawberry pound cake, which is literally strawberries and, and cream. So it's extremely gourmand. It smells very foody. It smells like you could eat it. Some gourmands are more are more gourmand than other gourmands. <laughs> but I think this is definitely a gourmand. I don't think that that's really up for debate. I think that it's just a different type of gourmand. It's very soapy. It has a freshness. It has a cleanness in the opening. Like I said, that deep dry down is sweet and yummy and delicious. And it, and it is gourmand. So I think that it just wasn't what a lot of people were expecting. So it's gotten a little bit of flack. I've seen a few reviews, a couple reviews that I saw um, said that they really liked it. A lot of the reviews I saw said people were very disappointed, but I don't think they're disappointed in the perfume itself. The perfume itself is a good perfume. It's pleasant, it's likable, it's sweet, feminine and powdery and, and it has a yumminess to it, it's yummy. Um, and it's even almost, I would argue to say a little bit addictive, a little bit addictive. Like, like I said, I have nothing like it in my collection. I find myself coming up to my collection and wanting to pick it up and smell it even on days I don't wear it. And then usually when I do, I think, okay, sure. I'll just spray it on <laughs> because it does smell really good. And I think this is going to be a great gourmand fragrance going into spring and summer. I think it's going to shine when you walk outside and you pick this up off of your arm. It smells really, really good. Now let's talk about longevity. This is not an intense perfume. I wish they wouldn't have marketed it as an intense because I don't find it to be an intense perfume. Even Kali Vanilla 28, which is just an eau de parfum, not an intense concentration or an intense perfume. Kali Vanilla 28 is actually, I think, stronger than this one. And compared to something like Royal Vanilla Sugared Patchouli, there's no comparison. Royal Vanilla Sugar Patchouli is intense. It's marketed as intense and it is intense. It will fill a room. It will last for days and days. This is not really intense. And I go pretty crazy with this one. I go pretty hard because I feel like I need to because it is a soft perfume. I will spray like six to 10 sprays, no word of a lie, six to 10 sprays, um, a few on each arm, a couple on my chest, and maybe one behind each ear. And I just don't smell it on myself all that well. Um, I'll get the odd whiff. On clothing, I will say it does last longer. As with most perfumes, on clothing, it definitely does last longer, and it's more intense on clothing. On skin, it is a little softer. You do have to come a little closer. I think also, a little word of advice for people who only test their perfumes indoors. Like some people will spray the perfume just like, you know, on their wrist or on their arm and they'll just smell it in their house. You have to remember that the best way to truly get a feel for a perfume is to go out in the fresh air as well. So if you're just going to spray this for the first time on skin and test it indoors and, and not really give it a proper wear test, I would invite you to you know, give it a proper wear test because for me, oftentimes walking outdoors, simply the act of walking outside and picking up that sillage of the perfume coming up on the nice, cool, fresh air or the, or the wind or whatever, that shows me so much more about how the performance really smells. Cause when you're in your house, you get used to smells, you become desensitized. It happens with me, not just with this one, but tons of other perfumes. I become very desensitized because my whole house starts to smell like me or I'm just used to it. Once you go out in fresh air, you get a different feel. So I would suggest going out on fresh air. When I do that, I can really smell this a lot better. What do I feel about this perfume overall? I like it. I think it's a little bit addictive. I do like to come back and keep smelling it. I have nothing else like it in my collection. You know, I kind of like it. It's enjoyable. It's, it, it is for me what most gourmand kind of body sprays are, which is just something soft and light that isn't going to offend anybody that I can put on when I just want to smell sweet and good. Um, it is a sweet fragrance. It is a good fragrance. It's a little bit soapier than I would have liked. It's a little bit more powdery than I would have liked. It doesn't have the best performance. It lasts on me probably about five or six hours, I would say six is being generous, maybe five or six where it's still on my skin, but very soft. So to me, that is not an intense performance and that's not an intense longevity. Yeah. And it's so funny because just to smell it, like the first spray in the cap, it's so fresh and soapy, but you know, I think the downfall of this perfume is the marketing made everybody think it was going to be different than what it was. The marketing made it seem like it was just going to be so much richer than what it was. I wish they would have incorporated in the, in the, in the advertisement, the bergamot and the freshness and the soapiness and the kind of like spring, spring vibes. There was no like 
soapy, fresh spring in the advertising. It was mostly just all pistachio and dripping, ooey, gooey. It made it seem like that was all it was going to be. So people wanted that. People were expecting that. And that's not what they got. Like I said, it's fresh. It's soapy, in, especially in the opening. And for the first couple of minutes, it's very fresh and soapy. It smells like a beautiful, powdery pistachio soap in the opening. A lovely, like, shampoo, sort of. Like, it has that... It has that shampooy freshness, which I do really like. I like that kind of perfume. I just wish they would have marketed it as such because everybody smelled it and was immediately thrown off. Like, what? This is not what I expected. Um, so I totally understand that. Now, I do want to compare and contrast it, however, to another fragrance, which is truly um, not all that gourmand and, and quite fresh and soapy. And that is Le Petit Robe Noir Eau Fresh. Is this the front of the bottle? This is the front of the bottle. All right, now this is a perfume that I actually owned in the past, ended up doing a declutter at some point, got rid of it, didn't think I needed it, should have kept it because I loved it, and I didn't realize it was discontinued and that I wouldn't be able to get it to, to get it again. So I did get this on Poshmark, and this is a beautiful fragrance. So the notes that you have in here are, they also have pistachio, but it doesn't have so much of the gourmand notes in here. So in here, you do have lemon, bergamot, and mandarin orange in the opening, also some orange blossom. You have some sour cherry, you have raspberry, peach, Turkish rose, Bulgarian rose, jasmine sandback, almond blossom. You have tonka bean, pistachio, and musk. Now this is a very fresh, light, clean, soapy pistachio fragrance. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. And this is truly fresh and soapy and clean. And in my opinion, it's not gourmand. They do have pistachio in here. They do have vanilla. There are some like fruits in the opening, some citrus fruits in the opening, which again, don't stick around for too terribly long. They dissipate after a while and you're kind of left with this like soapy almond, the soapy almond pistachio. Wow, it's pretty, you guys. If you can find this, get it and <laughs> get your hands on it. So to compare and contrast these two, I think a lot of people are describing yum pistachio as though it's more like this one which this one is not gourmand in my opinion. This one is truly fresh, soapy and clean and classy and like an everyday out of the shower, just beautiful, calming, relaxing. It's so pretty. Everybody should smell this one if you haven't smelled it. It is really hard to get though. The young pistachio gelato, however, is so much more about that like whipped creaminess and the ice cream feel and the um, marshmallowiness and the cotton candy and... Yeah, I have the dry down of this one on my arm right now. And it's so, it's, it's very foodie. It's very foodie in the deep dry down. This one is not foodie. This one is truly a fresh, non-gourmand, fresh, soapy, you know, a soapy take on a pistachio. So they're quite different. And I think people are actually comparing the two on Fragrantica. I think people are saying it smells like that one. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So some people are saying that it smells like Aqualina pink sugar. I don't agree with that. And a lot of people are saying it smells like Petite Robe Noir Eau Fresh. Okay, so yeah, a lot of people are comparing these two. But make no mistake, Petite Robe Noir Eau Fresh is not gourmand. It's not gourmand. It's soapy and clean and fresh. It doesn't smell like food, like something I would want to eat. Whereas... The yum pistachio smells like food, like I could eat it, especially in the deep dry down. Yes, there's florals. Yes, there's, you know, um, citruses in the opening, but that doesn't make it not gourmand. I've heard some people say that the yum is like, all you get is like fresh citrus. Like all it is is like freshness, it's citrus. It's like, you know, the bergamot is like all you smell and it's like there the whole time and um, it's not gourmand. And I don't agree with that. I think it is gourmand. It's is it what I expected it to smell like based on the advertising? 100% not. Man, this one is so good. <laughs> I, you can't go wrong with Guerlain. I'm telling you, you can't go wrong. So, so these perfumes are very different to me. I would wear the Kali Yum more in the evening, cozy, or any day that I just wanted to smell light and non-offensive and just smell yummy but also kind of light and not too heavy or sticky or sickly sweet. It is a sweet fragrance. It's very sweet. I don't know if it's appropriate for all the time. However, it's not strong. It's not intense. So I think you could wear it for multiple occasions and it's not gonna bother anybody. 
Petite Robe Noir Fresh, on the other hand, this is one I would wear when it's actually hot outside. It's warm outside. I'm going to the gym. I need something fresh. I need something that's kind of almost all season appropriate. That's your Petite Robe Noir Fresh. My biggest beef, aside from the fact that I feel the advertising was a little misleading, is that the performance is not good. It just does not project. Like, sitting here, I... Waving my arm around in front of my face, I cannot pick it up. Like I say, I can pick it up on myself when I walk outside and I can smell it if I put it on a shirt and pick up the shirt because the shirt just holds on to those molecules so much stronger. Um, but I'm not, it just doesn't perform very well, even enough for me to like really enjoy the fragrance. Like it doesn't perform well enough for me to really, really enjoy that fragrance. Um, I want to be able to smell my perfume. I want to smell it wafting off of myself and maybe in some circumstances I will like I say if it's on clothing it's better if I walk outside it's better if I'm outside in fresh air it's better but when I'm sitting inside in my house I don't really smell it all that much so I I don't understand really why they even marketed it as intense because it's really not intense um yeah, it just it just smells so subtle and so soft and so faint on my skin. And I've only been doing this for like 20 minutes, sitting here for maybe 15, 20 minutes, and it's already very, very soft. It just is not a intense concentration. And that being said, do I like it? Yeah, I do. And I actually really, really like the opening. The opening is... The opening is this absolutely delicious, like freshy, freshy, fresh pistachio, like almost minty, powdery marshmallow. That's what it is. It's a fresh marshmallowy pistachio soap in the opening. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I really like it. I just wish that the advertising would have made it sound like that's what it was going to be. And I also wish that it was stronger. So those are my two beefs with this perfume. Otherwise, I think it's great. And I think if you like pistachio and if you love Kaoli, it's worth having. If you're a hardcore Kaoli fan, if you're a Kaoli collector, if you want to support the company, it's definitely worth having. It's not not worth having. It's just a little pricey for the performance. That's the only thing. A little pricey for the performance. But... You know, there's Jo Malone too, and a lot of Jo Malone perfumes have terrible performance and people pay $200 for them. So I think, you know, you, you can't pick and choose. You have to be realistic about things. And yeah, so that's, that's my thoughts on this one. At the Atomizer, it's very soapy. Deep dry down is very sweet. Changes a lot. Too expensive for the performance. Advertising was a little bit misleading, but overall it's a beautiful fragrance. So it just depends on what you like. It just depends on what you like. So that's my thoughts on the Yum Pistachio Gelato. Will I be keeping this? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see. I do like it. I have been kind of, like I say, feeling a little bit addicted to it. Like I want to keep coming back to it and smelling it. I do find it really, um, really enjoyable. I think it has a time and a place and yeah, but I probably wouldn't repurchase it if it ran out. You know what I mean? Which I think is okay because I think this is a limited edition, isn't it? So um, this is not a repurchase for me. This is not a, I need a backup bottle. Whereas Vanilla Royal Sugared Patchouli would be a repurchase. Vanilla 28 is backup bottle worthy. For me, this is not backup bottle worthy. So that is my thoughts on the Kaoli Yum Pistachio Gelato.